I want to start with this, Misty. Uh, my favorite line, one of my favorite lines came from you, Gilda, because I know, Gilda, you must be here. Gilda's <laughs> right there. Oh, my God. Oh, there she is. There she is. There she is. <laughs> It's one of my favorite lines, Gil, that you said, what you have built is bigger than the ABT. Nobody can take that away. You have the world on your side. And I was sitting at home and I was cheering, going, yes, Gilda, yes, she does. So for those of us who don't really understand the process, just take us back to the moment where you were told, Misty, it's yours. It does a phone ring and you pick up the phone? Are you in a meeting? Are you at home? How does that work where you get the news? Um, every, first of all, thank you all for being here and your support is incredible. We're so excited about the film coming out and for everyone to be able to see it means so much to us. Um, every company works differently uh -huh. and American Ballet Theater in particular is pretty, um, unpredictable. You never know how someone's going to find out how they're promoted. When I was promoted from the corps de ballet to soloist, I was called in for a private meeting with Kevin McKenzie, the artistic director, and he said to me that he was promoting me, but I couldn't tell anyone until the press release went out and um, the company was informed. So I had to keep this secret from like everyone in the company, which Did you tell strange. you? Of course I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but when I was uh, promoted to principal, it was uh, a company meeting, so in front of everyone, 80 dancers and all the staff, so there were, I don't know, 90 to 100 people in the room. Um, and we went about our normal business of talking about the next tour and stuff, company stuff, and there were lots of promotions that happened, corps de ballet members to soloist, and then uh, Kevin turned to me and said, Misty, take a bow. And that I was it. Started Misty, falling. take a bow. <laughs> yeah. And you just started crying right then and there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it meant a lot to me to have that happen in front of my peers, who a lot of them have been along with me on this journey from the beginning, from the time I was 17, even 16 years old in the summer intensive program at American Ballet Theater. And mm -hmm. I think have seen my hard work and dedication and, and all that I've put into getting here. And to me, that meant the world to me. Could you feel the love though? Because you know, you know, it, for the black community, for the white community, what strikes me so much about you is that everybody really was, Gilda was right, the world really was cheering for you. People wanted you to get it and they so felt that you deserved it. Could you feel that love? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I get a, a pretty balanced mix of um, responses from people. So I feel like it keeps me pretty grounded. Yeah. I understand the work that I've put in. I have to remember that every day and that I do deserve this and that I've been working for 15 years to get to this point and mm -hmm. proving myself over and over again against so many obstacles that a lot of dancers experience, but it's it's been a lot of work. And mm -hmm. But I do um, experience people that, you know, don't, they haven't seen this slow and steady rise. They've mm -hmm. seen what the media has presented in the past year and, you know, think that maybe my race has helped me, which is, I think, ignorant if yeah. you know the ballet world. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. No, you've been working for a very long time. Nelson, what was the Misty Copeland story you wanted to tell? Because it is quite a story. One of six children, the first time she hit the dance floor, how she felt you know, what it means to the community. What was the story you wanted us to know about her? Well, it's interesting that some of the stuff you mentioned is stuff we didn't want to include. <laughs> because... Uh, that you did not want. Right, because Misty's been documented pretty extensively, especially in the last few years, 60 Minutes, etc. So her background... CBS this morning, go ahead. CBS this morning. <laughs> go ahead. So that's, that's sort of bit, you can Google all of yes. that. Mm -hmm. So the question was, what is the film about? It's got to be about stuff that you can't see and can't know on your own. Mm -hmm. And so we met just before she did the Firebird mm -hmm. at the Met. Incredible high moment. Did you two know each other? We met at a, we met at a Bevy Smith dinner oh. party. Dinner party. Uh -huh. And so uh, Gilda, her, who's, she should be up here, I guess she's like one of the stars too. Uh -huh. Gilda, Squire, her manager, uh -huh. helped me get tickets to the Met. Uh -huh. I saw the Firebird, her picture's in front of the Met, it's crazy. But afterwards, uh, she said that she was dancing very injured. So over the course of that summer, we, we communicated. I said, I'd love to do something with Misty. And sometime after she had a surgery for that injury, uh, we, I, we sat, Eliza Norville, my producer, and Gilda and I, and 
we all sat and said, can we maybe, can I follow you while you're injured? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. So we just sort of, I said, there's a, there's a story here of an artist at this great height, yeah. who then falls down and has to come back come up. Come back, yes. And, you know, to her credit, she let me get very close to her and follow her during this process, not knowing this, you know, this could have had a very unhappy ending. Yeah. You know, so on one level, it's a story that almost every dancer deals with. Injury, uh, will I make it to be a principal in the company? Mm -hmm. It's an ordinary story on that level. Mm -hmm. But because race is part of it and the, the unique history of classical ballet, it becomes an extraordinary story. Mm -hmm. So it's those two levels that really attracted me. Let's talk about the injury for just a second because did you think that you were down for the count? That scene when you, I think you were in Italy and the chiropractor. <laughs> I, I, I sat there and I, I actually rewound it twice because wow. I thought, because I thought, is it as bad as I think it was? And each time it was, <laughs> and each time it was, it was so painful just watching. There was one night where he literally seemed to be on your back, like needing you, and I thought she's not crying a tear. <laughs> Did it hurt? Um, the the or, pain or was I that felt... good? You said you said a dancer's pain is different than anybody else's. Yeah, absolutely. Um, every dancer experiences injury to some extent. Um, but that's... Misty, he was on your back. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, get off of her! But he, was, was he helping you? Was he helping you? Dancers get to a point where you can have something out of place or you can be in so much pain and you have to get on stage. There's no way around it, I mean, unless you physically aren't capable of, like, walking. Um, but, you know, you go through these things to get on stage. You, you deal with these situations because you want to go on stage and perform. Mm -hmm. And I had no other choice, especially in that moment in Italy. It was a small gala and I was And you were going to go on. I was going to go on. And um, my, I was having back spasms for a week and I think my sacrum was out of place. So I was going to do anything to relieve the pain. So did that help? Yeah. It, it did. It I couldn't tell by the, the way show. you walked out of there. I wasn't sure. It's sort of like, uh, thanks, I think. <laughs> you know, and he was so matter of fact about it too. Yeah. It, so, and it's going through a translator was also interesting to watch that. That was a strange moment, but the, the, <laughs> The, the injury that I dealt with with my shin was um, something I'd never experienced before. And a lot of people's careers end that way. And mm -hmm. I didn't allow myself to get to that point of believing that it could be the end because I think your mental and emotional state are such a huge part of, of healing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, maybe I was being naive or stupid, but <laughs> I was convinced that my journey was far from over and I was just gonna keep at it. And Nelson happened to capture all of, all that. of that. I was there that night if I were to, and to hear later that you were dancing in excruciating pain, but you were so motivated by the audience, I, it, when I was watching the documentary, it, 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 it felt like you felt you couldn't let the audience down, that you had to go on no matter what. Yeah. Even risking even more serious injury. It was a combination of things. I think that the number one thing that was motivating me was knowing the impact of, you know, Gilda really getting this message out that this is a big deal that yeah. this African-American soloist with American Ballet Theater is performing this role, Firebird, and what a big deal it was. Then to know that, you know, it was like almost a sold out. Was it sold out? I don't know. It was close to being sold out, which was a huge deal. And I didn't so much see any of empty the, seats, but go ahead. <laughs> so much of the African American community was there, and it yeah. was like, I have to do this. I have to prove that we belong in this space, that we're capable. And then on top of all of that, I felt that I'm 29 years old. This is an opportunity that I doubt will come again if I don't do this and I'm, and I'm injured and I take time off. I'll never be given this opportunity mm -hmm. again. Therefore, I will never be a principal dancer. Mm -hmm. So it was all of these things that it was like, mm -hmm. I felt like I, your I blacked out and I was like, I'm the firebird. And, did it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it doesn't seem like you told anybody either that you were no. in pain I mean, before the performance. Yeah, it's, it's something when you're in a professional company, I mean, they're looking out for your best interest. And 
if you go to them and say, I'm feeling this crazy pain, I shouldn't even be walking around, they're not gonna allow you to go on stage. Yeah. And maybe it was a stupid move, but I didn't tell anyone because I wanted to go on stage mm -hmm. and, and prove that I was capable of being this artist and capable of being a principal dancer. Mm -hmm. And had I not done that, when I came back, I don't think I ever would have been given Odette O'Deal in Swan Lake. Yeah, in Swan Lake. So when she told you that she was in pain, weren't you shocked to hear that, Nelson? I was there that night as well, and I would never have thought it was a magnificent performance. Yes, it, was. it was inspiring, um, which goes to show adrenaline and a sense of purpose can make you do anything. Were you on drugs? No. No drugs? No, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I've heard I don't. drugs can be very helpful. No. Yeah. I, I definitely at that point was, I was not taking so anything for any of that. the pain. Yes. I wanted to because I didn't want to do more damage. I wanted to be able to um, be able to kind of sense what I was doing to my body. Mm -hmm. So you thought it was extraordinary too when you yeah, saw it was what amazing. she had done. In, in fact, I, I have, aside from that performance, going on stage, there was a reception afterwards. Yes. yes. And I actually took a picture of you. You did? Yes. <laughs> I took a picture. I didn't was, see me in the movie. <laughs> there's a shot, actually, of... of, of no, sir, I'm kidding, I'm yeah, kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, yes, you remember that night, guys. There was a group of women mm -hmm. of, of who, who became some of her mentors, mm -hmm. including yourself, mm -hmm. who I took a picture of, remember that vividly, and I met Raven Wilkinson mm -hmm. that night. Mm -hmm. In fact, who, who had such an important part in the film. And Raven uh, actually walked Raven out of the maze of Lincoln Center and got her a taxi that night, not knowing at all that I would end up working with her and shooting her for the film like a year later. Yeah. So it was a very impactful night in so many different ways. I thought this was such an important movie because it just showed not only Misty's, Misty's um, journey, if you will, but it showed the history of black dancers. Many of these names I'd never heard of before. So to see them and to hear some of them speak, was that also important? I think you said in the, in the doc that you were accused of talking about being black too much. What does that mean? You tell me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely been something that's that's to this day is brought to my attention that some people feel I focus on too much, and um, I feel do like I can't. Do you think you focus on it too much? I, or why I, do you focus on it? Period. I don't think that it's possible to tell my story or my experiences to getting to this point and all the obstacles I've. I've had to overcome without expressing that I'm an African-American woman. That's why this is such a feat. That's why I've had the obstacles that I've had. That's why this is such a big deal. That's why it's historical. And so to, to deny or ignore those facts um, is not being truthful about my experiences. Mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, the classical ballet world, from my point of view, coming from someone who's worked mostly in pop culture, it was almost like going back to the 1950s uh, in terms wow. of some of the attitudes toward blackness, the attitudes to audience. Uh, it's a very extremely conservative, extremely, it defines old school, right? Mm -hmm. So Misty is such a pioneer there. It's almost like Jackie Robinson in the 1940s in that particular world, mm -hmm. which is stunning to say in the 21st century. But we're 2015. I thought Brenda's comments I got, the hair stood up on the back of my neck where she said it's the last bastion of white supremacy. I had to think about that for a second. Yeah, uh, the whole idea That about, sounded so harsh to me. But I mean, the ideas about body image. Yes. Uh, I mean, there's, some fun, there's funny but also bitter things about, you know, black dancers have certain, supposedly have hard feet. They can't be flexible. All these kinds flat of feet. flat feet, the biscuits, you know. I taught him that. Yeah, dancers. thank you. Oh. Yeah, all of, the, all of this, you know, this talk. I like biscuits, no. That, that's a too. bad yeah. thing. <laughs> but like this, co it's, it's coded language, you know, it's coded, it's coded language. language. It's coded okay. language uh -huh. that, that defines the world. So the fact that Misty being on the, on the front of the Met yeah. when she did Fiber was such a stunning thing should not be happening. There's so many great black dancers, there's generations of black dancers who were told, well, why don't you just do African dance? Hmm. Why don't you just do modern dance? They were steered away mm -hmm. at, that, you know, at that developmental part of their career. So I believe Missy's legacy will really be the nine, seven, eight-year-old girl or boy right now who's a really talented dancer. Mm -hmm who now will go, well, this is an option for me that I might have rejected mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. 
Because you, you point out in the in the doc that it, the, co the the hue of your color and your muscular body would be distracting to the audience. I thought, isn't that an interesting way to phrase? You're not really welcomed here, mm -hmm. and you were not <laughs> deterred by that. No, I mean that's been told to generations and generations of of black dancers. Um, it wasn't really brought to my attention though until I was a professional already, which I think I'm very fortunate to have experienced that. So many dancers hear that when they're seven, eight years old and then think this is not for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was again, just very fortunate that at 13, I was in the small ballet school, small community, diverse community in California, in California. Mm -hmm. and they saw that I had this incredible talent and I was called a prodigy and they nurtured me for four years and then I was released into the world and then realized, oh my God, I'm black and I'm the only one here. <laughs> but I think had I had that experience younger, I, I might not be here today. Uh -huh. What did you know when you were that little girl dancing in that group? Because you said from the moment your, your feet hit the floor, you felt, you felt that, this, that you were home, that you belonged. Mm -hmm. What is that that you felt? Because I'm trying to think at 13, <laughs> what I was doing, I, you know, I was done with Barbie, I know that. I wasn't. I was, you I was, the, uh, yeah, I was I done wasn't. with Barbie at 13. <laughs> I was reading Nancy Drew, you know? I was reading Nancy Drew. I can't think of anything that I felt so passionately about. That's why I'm so yeah. fascinated that you felt something. What was I, it? I, I was the same, I mean, I had, no interest or passion for anything. I was a scared little girl that had no direction um, or interest, really. And when I stepped into a ballet studio, it was like this instant. Love? Uh, yes, everything. Voice, um, feeling of belonging for the first time, feeling of being a part of something bigger than me. Um, it just was like I was born to be in that world. So you didn't have role models. Now you're, you're a role model for many young people as Nelson pointed out. You didn't have role models. So who were you looking to, to say, I wanna be like that, or I think I can do that? Um, it was this odd combination of things. I think having started so late in ballet, uh, I was instantly drawn to Paloma Herrera from mm. the beginning and, and ABT was my ultimate goal always from the time I discovered ballet. Um, but it was this odd combination of Paloma Herrera, who maybe I was drawn to her because of her extreme ability and, and at such a young age, she came into ABT at like 15 years old and was like the youngest principal dancer at 19 or something. Um, and then Mariah Carey. It was like these two Carey. people <laughs> that I was so influenced by. And, and I, in time, you know, I've, I've said this before, but I feel like it was, um, Mariah Carey was biracial like I am, and she was successful, and she was beautiful, and she was talented, and it was like both of these people that I felt um, influenced me at a young age. Mariah, in hearing her music before I discovered ballet, I would choreograph mm -hmm. to her music. So. Mm -hmm. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> can you sing? No. Oh, okay. No, you can't I, sing. No. You were on Broadway. You, you I, I did sing. I can't sing. <laughs> you were on Broadway, Mr. I mean, and, and Nelson, when you're telling the story, what do you hope that the audience will walk away from watching this? Well, I mean, for me, it was this idea of the power and the dedication of a dancer. I just was... Of the will of a dancer, the talent of a dancer? All of it, because the... they're artist athletes. So they're artist doing athletes, artist, like artistic them. work using uh, fairy tales and, and the, yeah. the great music of classical, the classical world. And they have to be at peak physical condition mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's a unique combination. Uh, and also dancers have a level of dedication because they're not, the chances of getting a hit record or becoming a millionaire or having a big movie, it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. They're dancing for passion, they're dancing for love. And their bodies are their art form mm -hmm. and they give it all. And I was, through Misty's story, I was able to show from the chiropractor, mm -hmm. the doctor's visit, you know, all the way up to getting to Swan Lake, that her body literally is the story of the film. Mm -hmm. And watching it evolve from where it was at that peak at Fireberg through coming, building itself back up, you know, it's really a narrative through the body. That's why so much of the film is really just watching her, because I think you see through her movement the narrative. And that it was really, a, as a filmmaker, it was an amazing honor to be able to capture that mm -hmm. uh, and watch it evolve. Just 
we just never knew where it was going to end. That's the thing that's amazing is that if our ending had just been she came back and was part of the company and remained a soloist, it would have been great. But where it is now, it's unbelievable. So when you were starting it, you didn't know? Well, you knew she was principal. Because no, it no. opens with principal. No, 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 no. We added that. We added that. Oh, you It was didn't. done oh, you and I hadn't started. been promoted. Oh. That happened later. No, we started Whoa, out. Whoa, so Nelson. The first, <laughs> wow. the first thing we shot <laughs> was her at Steps in January 19, 2013. See, I she's misunderstood. Just okay. Yeah, she's just coming off surgery. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's, she's learning to, re really relearning to dance again. And she's going, you know, so it's very, very, it was very much a mystery. Well, this is good for you, Mr. George. So when you heard <laughs> that she had gotten principal, what did you think? I thought. Did you cry? I didn't, no, I didn't cry. <laughs> but, but. I don't know, I got a little choked up now. But I was. There's nothing I, wrong with admitting that you cried. No, I felt like this was, this is inevitable. Because, inevitable. as Gilda said, to invoke Gilda again. It's not again, inevitable, inevitable, it hadn't happened ever. No, I mean, for me, for, from a pure, like, how can they not let this woman, and let's talk about money. She's, she's selling tickets. Yes. She's a star. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know what artistic business can, it can exist without stars. She's already made herself a star with their help and then outside of them. Mm -hmm. So, to, what, to me, the principle is an acknowledgement of all of the work that went into her career. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, the biggest beneficiary, in a way, is ABT of her success, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. It makes them look incredible. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> so, I mean it's, to me, it was inevitable. It would have been crazy uh -huh. if they hadn't made this move. Yeah, but, you know, crazier things have happened. When was the last time you went to Red Lobster? I was very excited about that. <laughs> Because they have the best cheddar cheese biscuits, I'm just saying. I'll bet uh, you haven't been there in a while. But I love that you and your friend said that you used to go to Red Lobster. Oh, yeah. Uh, when was the last time, Misty? Um, not that long ago. A couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> because I do think of your... I like what you just said. I wrote that down, artist athletes. Because do you feel that you're... I was wondering, are your legs insured? Are you... Very no. careful when you walk. Can you not <laughs> go skiing? No, I, I, I wouldn't do something. No, I can't go skiing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very clumsy, so I, anything could happen at any moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I, I, I wondered because, you know, I look at your legs really as a piece of art. That, that Under Armour commercial that says, I will, I want. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want? Oh, I, I want for there to be many more misties to come. <laughs> I, I think you have certainly opened the door. You know, Nelson seems to think it was inevitable that this was going to happen for you. Did you feel that? Um, I'd gotten to, no. I mean, I think that very often Nelson, I know you wanted Nelson, it, but did you course, feel it? Yeah. Very often Nelson would call and say, do you think it's going to happen? You think it's, this, <laughs> and this went on like, I don't know, two years ago, a year ago. Because I mean, partly I, and, I needed an ending. Well, yeah. And, so I was like, <laughs> something's got to happen here. You know, and, and I've, I've been very patient in trying to explain to people that it's, my path is very different from so many and I'm not waiting to kind of follow behind what's expected because that's never been my path. Um, but that there, uh, yeah, I mean, I just got to a point where I felt like I was doing so much of what I never dreamed I was could even do. They would give me an opportunity to do. I never thought I would do Odetto Deal. I never thought I would be Juliet. Mm -hmm. So it was like, this is enough for me. Like, this is what I worked so hard for, not for a title. I understood what that meant for the ballet world mm -hmm. um, in opening doors for people, but it got to a point where it was like, this is why I do what I do, to yeah. be able to do these roles that a handful of ballerinas get I to I love do. Odetto Deal, where you said, you know, a black swan playing a white swan. I like that uh. part. <laughs> you know, my favorite line, of course, was yours, Gilda, but my favorite scene was you, Alou, at the end. 
that, didn't you love that scene where she's just walking <laughs> down the street? She has on that gorgeous skirt, and I kept thinking, <laughs> Where she's go where is she going? She's walking past PJ Clark's. She's walking past Lincoln Center. Where is she going? Who is she going to meet? And then just that very sweet scene where the two of you embrace. We're all so happy that, that she has love in her life, aren't we? That you're not we're so happy about that. So so happy. You know that you have a whole nother life outside of ballet, you know? And I know that you're engaged. Anything you'd like to share where you'd like us to be? <laughs> Should I sit on the bride side or the groom side? Should I get a new dress? Okay, we have questions from the audience. What do you wish you had known before you started to dance? Whose question? <laughs> Somebody over there. Um, what do you wish you had know. known I, before you started to dance? I've, again, I feel very fortunate to have not known anything. I feel like it gave me no boundaries. I feel like it allowed me to just be me and not feel like I was unusual. Mm -hmm. I felt normal. I felt like every other little ballerina, and I feel like you didn't feel unusual. Even I felt unusual. I didn't really understand or realize that when I started dancing. I felt unusual when I wasn't in the ballet studio. I was a skinny little girl with hyperextended knees and big feet and a little peanut head and a long neck, and I was like, I don't. I'm ugly and I don't look like anyone. And then I went into the ballet studio and I was like. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like everyone around yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> what size are your big feet? I'm just curious. An eight. An eight. I'm 5'2". Okay. Mine are 11. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson, how has working with Misty impacted your process and creativity? Well, I, I just think, uh, I always joke we're both Virgos. So we're both hypercritical, hyper-focused. And I think her, her ability to go through pain I think I, I will hold, take that with me forever. The stuff that she goes through, and we, only, we just have a bit of it in the film. There's much yeah. more footage. I'm like, wow. And then she goes up and she gets on stage and she smiles and she looks amazing. Yeah. And after, that to me, you always have to have that ability and that willingness to go through it. It's gonna happen, the pain is gonna happen, but the joy is on the other side. Yeah, that scene where you're laying in the, in the uh, teacher's apartment you know, and you're moving your legs all around. What is she doing? Is she stretching your body, or what are you doing? It's a, um, a specific technique of floor bar. Oh, okay. Um, which is like ballet bar, but laying down without putting any pressure on your bones or your muscles. Can you tell you should say her, her, her name? Marjorie Liebert. Yeah. Marjorie Liebert. She's incredible. She's on the Upper West Side. On the Upper West Side. <laughs> That's art. That's our hood, <laughs> the Upper West Side. During the period of recovery, Misty, from your injury, what did your mental work involve? Um, hmm. There was a lot of, uh, work. Marjorie was a huge part of my recovery process. She was my mentor, my motivator, my cheerleader, my teacher. I mean, she saw me in my lowest of lows and just kind of watched this journey. She kept me focused on what my goal was. We worked on how I would approach roles that I wasn't even cast to do. Mm. Um, working on my upper body and my port bra because I was still like, I think I was in like a soft cast. I wasn't foot walking without crutches. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just trying to do things that I, I could control. Um, but it was just n not ever allowing myself to have doubts or give up. Even if I... Didn't was, you have down days where you no, just thought, oh my God, this, no, I can't take the, never. I didn't allow myself to. I was, I, she would come to my apartment every day and we would work on the floor of my, um, in my living room mm -hmm. and yeah, we would do that for a couple of hours before I could take ballet class. You sort of answered it. What did you think and say to yourself to prepare for your return to the stage? Um, oh, I just did it. The first time I stepped onto the stage, I hadn't yet gone back to rehearsals at ABT. Um, and Michelle Wiles, who's a former principal dancer with ABT, she said, well, maybe you should do this performance with my small company, Ballet Next, in Brooklyn. And um, I, that was kind of... And you said yes right away. I, and you went, well, oh. no. Um, <laughs> it was like, this is, this is how I'm going to do it. Like, I just have to do it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no other way of preparing. Were you nervous that yes. very first time? Yes, extremely nervous. Because, because were you not sure your legs were ready? Or you I were wasn't ready? strong enough. I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember finishing Dying Swan, 
and I hadn't stood on one leg and bowed in seven months. Mm. And I remember that being like the hardest part of the whole thing. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't curtsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was scary. And then I, I'm wondering if you listen to a certain type of music. What type of music do you listen to? Are you, is Misty Copeland listening to rap? Are you listening to Taylor Swift or do you have? <laughs> Well, I've seen Taylor three times. I love her. Oh. So, are you, Misty, um, that's okay. So, what are you? What are you listening to? What's um, on your? A combination of things. Rap? If you listen yes, to rap? yes, I do. Who's your favorite rapper? Drake. Meek Mill. Drake. No. Me too. <laughs> we were just talking about Drake on the way over here. I, I love. I love, I love like I love Anita Baker. I love Amel Larue. Um, I listen to a lot of R and B and mm -hmm. soul. Aretha Franklin. This is from Liana. If you didn't dance, where do you think, where do you think you would be right now? Um, it's I, you know, I truly believe that I'm I'm a fighter and I'm a determined person. That I would have ended up pushing through, you know, the diversity of growing up in in situations that I grew up in. Um, but then there are some sides of me that think, well, maybe I, I don't know, have a couple kids and still be in San Pedro and, I don't know, be married to like a fisherman or something. <laughs> <laughs> Olu says no fisherman, no. <laughs> couple kids, I think that sounds nice. Did you enjoy Broadway? When I saw you um, on the town uh, and I went backstage, you said you were nervous. You didn't seem it at all, even though it was a very different thing for you. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Would you like to go back to Broadway? <laughs> um, I think after like the third show, I started to enjoy it. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but the process leading up was was extremely stressful for me, and, and being a perfectionist and being a part of the ballet world and, and a culture where you rehearse so much that it's just second nature, and uh, you know you have your coaches on you like nonstop and the. The Broadway world, in my experience, was very different. I was kind of just, I asked for my script, and I was freaking out because I'd never memorized lines before. I had to speak in, like on cue in front of anyone and like move. that, memorize lines, yeah. And, yeah. and then I had to sing, which I'd never done before. All of that terrified me. Um, and the, the dancing was a different genre of dance. It wasn't classical ballet. Um, and I did all of it with like five rehearsals. So mm -hmm. it was, I was terrified. But isn't it good to step outside of your your That's comfort why zone? That's I did it, and then yeah. That's why I did it. She's and gonna I... be a. She'll have her own Broadway show one day. Yeah. With Kay Diggs. <laughs> With Kay Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And our last question. This is from your number one fans, Caitlin and Chloe. What's your favorite role that you've been cast in? Juliet. Juliet. <laughs> Well, Maya Angelou once said to me that success means loving what you do, loving how you do it, and loving who you are. And I see, I look at you and go, check, check, check. Continued success to you. We are cheering you. you on always, Thank always. You.